The TriCaster has some amazing built-in audio capabilities, but if you've ever tried to mix a show using just the mouse, you'll know how frustrating it can be. You might be thinking, there's got to be a better way. Well, there is, and today I'm going to show you how to do it. You might be thinking, there's another device that does this. There is, however, it's quite expensive and I've heard mixed reviews. But I won't mention any names because I'm an avid fan of theirs. Right here on my desk, I've got the Behringer X-Touch. It's really affordable, has eight faders and then one master fader, scribble strips so you can write channel names, whatever, VU meters, it's got it all, even a display here which we can put timecode on for DDRs. We also support the X-Touch, the standard one, which is cheaper, uh, but you lose the scribble strips and VU meters. It's worth noting that these are all implemented using Mackie control protocol, so you could probably plug in any controller that supports Mackie control and use it with this just by adding the X-Touch to your project. So to get started, I just wanna talk you through the show I've got on my TriCaster because that kind of is gonna dictate how we lay out this X-Touch. So if we go over to the X-Touch and the TriCaster, you can see I have two cameras. These are literally just these cameras that I'm using to film this video. Uh, and then, uh, so we'll pretend input one is the host and input two is gonna be the guest. Then I have two inputs that are Skype TX, so we're bringing in some callers on Skype to ask them what they think of current events. And then I have my four DDRs that are all playing back media, and then we will use the main fader for the master in the TriCaster. I have my record solo mute buttons up here. We're just gonna map the mute and the solo buttons for today because that's really the only ones relevant for the TriCaster. That being said, you can use these for whatever you want. You can set macros on this, do whatever you want in central control. And if, if you wanna learn more about that, I'd suggest checking out some of the other videos. VU meters, we will map to the channel levels. So you'll be able to see, even if you're not on that tab in the TriCaster interface as I am now, you will be able to see the levels of your uh, channels. Then on the scribble strips, what we're gonna do is the top row is gonna dynamically take the button name, so the switcher button name, which you can rename in the TriCaster, for the top row and the bottom row is gonna show the level of that channel. So when we move that fader, we will actually see the level updating on here. Okay, so now we know what we're mapping, let's actually get around to doing it. So if we come over to my desktop, I have, as always, just a blank central control file. So we're gonna start by adding two devices and yep, you guessed it, TriCaster and the X-Touch. Now, let's say you have a VMC1 or a Vector. No problem, we have them as well. So I'm gonna start with the TriCaster and I'll add that to the project, and then I'm just gonna change the IP address. Username and password, this is the live panel username and password. If you've never changed this, you don't need to worry about it. If you've changed it, put in the relevant username and password. I'm gonna turn on get VU meters and also get DDR position for reasons that will become clear later. With that done, I'm gonna turn it on. If it enables, the connection's fine. If it doesn't, check the username, and password, and IP address, just to be sure. I'm going to add another device, and this is going to be the X-Touch Universal in my case, but like I said before, we have the other models. And it should just select the right ports if the device is connected to the system, and then I'm gonna turn this on as well. And if, it's, if connection is successful, you'll notice the VU meter will just momentarily flash. Let's get started with the mapping. So I'm gonna click X-Touch Universal, already selected, and then I'm going to click Device Mapping. We will start with the faders. So I'm just gonna change this here to faders and we'll start on fader one. So I will select TriCaster here if it's not already selected and I'm gonna do set mixer input level. And you guessed it, we're gonna turn on quick assign. So I'm gonna click this four times and now I've assigned those first four inputs on the system as I said we would. And now I'm gonna just jump to DDR1 here because that's the next bit we wanna do. All of them are done, and then I'm just gonna to go to master, turn off quick assign, and that is our faders done. Now, you'll notice that the faders on here haven't moved to reflect the TriCaster level. That's fine, once we've done mapping, what we'll do is we'll turn the TriCaster device on and off in central control, just to force it to get to the same position that the TriCaster's at. After you map it the first time, this won't be a problem. Let's do our buttons next, so I will start. And to find the one I want, we'll do solo first, so I'm just gonna do turn on jump to control. So as soon as I touch this button on the X-Touch, it finds it in the list for me. 
So I will find the relevant command, which in our case is gonna be solo mixer channel. And I'm gonna again go to input one, turn on quick assign, first four, again, DDRs, great. And then there is no solo for the master, so that's fine. Now let's go to mute. And the command I'm going to want to use for that is mute mixer channel. So again, input one, one, two, three, four. DDR one for five again, and that is mapped. Let's look at the VU meter. So let's do get VU meter on the VU meters. And again, exact same thing. And you'll actually see, we're already seeing the lights on here light up. DDR one. And that is done. Now all that's left to do is the scribble strip. So let's go over to change this to the display control type. And we'll start with LCD one top line and we'll do get button label. The button label can be set by right clicking that button on the TriCasters interface. As soon as you make a change there, you'll see it reflected on the scribble strips on the X touch. Let's actually map that then. So all I need to do is I'm gonna do get button label again, same process. DDR1, a lot of inputs. <laughs> Bottom line, we're going to use get channel level so we can see the channel level on the displays. So again, I'm going to go back to input one. And then I'm going to jump all the way to DDR1. And that is done. So like I said, what we're going to do here is if I switch over to this, I'm going to turn the TriCaster device on and off and you'll see the faders just jump to the position. It knows what channels are muted. I can see the channel names on here and it's all working. So if we actually punch over to look at the TriCaster UI, you can see as I move these faders, it's reflected on the UI. I'm seeing levels here. If I mute a channel, I see that too. Solo, I can see that. And even as I move these faders, we see the level update on the scribble strip. I could leave this video here, but as a bonus, I wanted to show you how we can use the transport controls on the X-Touch to control, say, a DDR. And we'll even use the timecode display up here to display the current position of that DDR. So if we go back to our central control. I'm going to go back to device mapping for this X-Touch. And I'll go display, this time transport display, and I'm going to use the get DDR timecode command. And in this case, we're just going to use DDR1. We'll get into delegations and stuff in a later video. And I want to see the remaining time. I think that's more useful. So I can shout at my talent that the DDR playback is about to finish. I'm going to add that command. And already you see we're seeing that timecode on here. Let's do the button. So we have control now. I'm going to do find the stop button. And we'll just do DDR stop on here. DDR1 again, play just say DDR play and that's that we have control over the DDR you see the time stops when I stop it and we're even seeing the lights light up to reflect the DDR state and if and that's it there's a lot more we could do here you know we could use these knobs up here to control gain of each channel we could set up all kind of macros on these buttons here or even switch a control maybe we want to use this jog wheel for DDR transport position it's all possible, but for time's sake, didn't cover it in this video. If you want me to get more in depth into media playback control and delegations, ask and I'll make that video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.